So the writer's strike has officially come and gone. And you know, there's a lot of information that's still not quite revealed regarding the writer's strike. Nobody really knows the details of the deal fully, but there are some speculations based off insider sources and whatnot and people close to the subject. Now, the writer's strike was never going to benefit the actual writers. We know this. Anytime the studios actually sign off on something, they're going to find a loophole some way, somehow to try to recoup the money, right? So if they're going to increase the actual wages that these writers are going to get, chances are it's going to come off the production costs. I would just imagine that's going to be the case. Now, that could be true. Well, that could not be true because as we've seen, their production cost is already ridiculously high as it is, and they're trying to cut back. They've been trying to cut back for a while, and now with the writer's strike, it looks like they're going to have to cut back even more. Now, we have an article from Bounding Into Comics that says financial analyst claims new WGA deal will put writers out of work as studios cut film and TV productions, which is exactly what I was thinking the entire time that these uh, deals were supposedly being made and spoke of. So let's get into this article, guys, from Bounding Into Comics. But of course, before we do, if you're new here, I'm Shadow Ban as hell. Consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video to push this out into the YouTube algorithm. It says financial analyst and YouTuber Valiant Renegade reacted to the recent deal the Writers Guild of America America signed claiming it will end up putting a number of writers out of work, which I would not be surprised. The Writers Guild of America West announced that they had cut a deal with the studios earlier this week. Writing on X, the WGA reached a tentative agreement with the AMPTP. Today, our negotiating committee, WGAW board, and WGAE council all voted unanimously to recommend the agreement. The strike ends at 12.01 a.m. The organization also shared a link to memorandum of the agreement between the union and the studios. So they had this big post on Twitter where they were essentially saying the strike ends at 12.01. They were making it this, this big deal as if anybody cared about these people being on strike. Nobody actually cared about these writers being on strike. Very few even felt the actual effects of them being on strike. And again, nobody talked about it. Nobody even cared. The only people who talked about it were the ones like us, the YouTubers who were reporting on it and talking about just how terrible Hollywood is. <laughs> That's all we did. Nobody was actually hoping that the strike was going to end. But of course, here we are. So of course, Hollywood wants to uh, build it up and make it into this bigger thing than it actually is. Oh, look, guys, our writer strike is over. Aren't you guys excited for all of our writers to come back? Don't you want another She-Hulk? Don't you? Not really. So it says, reacting to the deal, financial analyst Valiant Renegade shared on YouTube, the union bosses of the WGA have declared victory against Hollywood Studios. Meanwhile, a lot of the rank-and-file writers, the union members themselves, are probably going to be out of work and perhaps even looking for new careers. They should have did that from the beginning, man. All of these writers should have did that from the beginning. They're, they're not made to be actual writers. They're pretty damn terrible at their jobs of being writers, which is why they feel so threatened by AI. It says he went on to explain why why so pretty much as we predicted or as any economics textbook could have predicted of this, if there was going to be an artificial increase in labor costs, then there was going to be a necessary offset by way of production costs. From there, Valiant Renegade cited an article by Deadline's Nelly Andriva, who notes that the studios won't be making as many TV shows and thus there won't be as many jobs for the writers. Andriva states a celebrated contraction, more competition, reeled in budgets, fewer overall deals, and possibly more cancellations are some of the things industry sources are preparing for. It's very similar to the idea of like, think about like McDonald's, right? When McDonald's was forced to increase their minimum wage uh, with basically every other fast food spot to $15 an hour. Remember when they were fighting for that $15 an hour? What ended up happening before that actual $15 an hour thing became solidified? It's very clear what happened. They got replaced by, by autonomous robots, essentially. Like, half of the workforce was replaced by robots. They don't, they don't even have the same workforce that they had before. So, yeah, they're going to pay higher wages. But now half of the people are gone working somewhere else, and robots took their place. This is the same threat that they're trying to avoid, and this is why they don't like AI, because they feel like the same thing is going to happen. And I guarantee you, it will happen. They're going to have half of the amount of writers that they have now it's only a matter of time they're going to either fire them get rid of them or just not straight up hire them because they're going to be able to have ai do the job and then on top of that they're going to be able to just have other people run it and fix it up and everything and get the show out there in the same amount of time if not faster so there's no reason for them to really care about giving you this artificial increase in pay when half of you probably won't even have a job to benefit from that pay it says to that point andriva quoted an anonymous executive 
executive who informed her no one is buying. This is the worst marketplace that I've ever experienced. An anonymous writer also informed her across the board. What I've heard from buyers is that they will be buying less and making less. Another anonymous studio executive also stated the strike just sped up the inevitable pullback. I suspect everyone will be doing less. And that's what I said before. We already knew that these studios were not going to be doing anywhere near as much as they were over the past couple of years. We knew that. They even said that. Bob Iger came out and said, this is not happening. We need to lower our costs. We need to not make as many TV shows and movies, and we need to focus on the quality of whatever we actually do make. Now, for them, I don't think it's really about quality. I just think it's about how little can we actually lose while still getting our message across. That's basically what they're trying to do. It says, while Andreeva cited a number of anonymous sources, which, by the way, anonymous source, take it with a grain of salt, the Walt Disney Company CEO Bob Iger and Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige have made it abundantly clear that they are going to be cutting back the amount of shows and movies they plan on producing in order to cut costs. That's literally what I just said. That's perfect. Needham Financial Analyst reported that Iger and Disney plan to lower output by Marvel Studios and lower the cost per unit after attending an investor event at Walt Disney World earlier this month. And then it says earlier this year, during the Walt Disney Company's Q1FY23 earnings results call, Iger stated we have to be better at curating the Disney and the Pixar and the Marvel and the Star Wars of it all. So basically, he was saying that they really need to work on making the movies and TV shows that they're doing with these IPs just overall better. Like, they have to have a better playbook with these major IPs. These are major IPs that will allow them to make a ton of money if they knew what the hell they were doing, but they're too busy pushing a message instead of actually focusing on production quality, storytelling, writing, and all that. That's what's important to them. The message is more important to them. If they can push the message and not lose as much money, guarantee they're going to do it. They're trying to find a way to make that happen. They haven't quite found it just yet, but they're going to keep looking to see what they can do to make that dream of theirs a reality. He added in, of course, reduce costs on everything that we make. While we are extremely proud of what's on screen, it's gotten to a point where it's extraordinarily expensive. We want all the quality. We want the quality on the screen, but we have to look at what they cost us. Feige told Entertainment Weekly in February, we want Marvel Studios and the MCU projects to really stand out and stand above. So people will see that as we get further into phase five and six, the pace at which we're putting out the Disney Plus shows will change so they can each get a chance to shine. I'm, I'm not even, I don't even want to think about phase five and six, ladies and gentlemen. Phase four was so terrible that I have zero, zero, zero interest in phase, phase five and six. I, I literally do not care. And I've proven that because I haven't, I haven't reviewed any of the shows. And every time I think about changing my mind, I always just remind myself it is not worth it. But you know what? Sometimes it is worth it only because the fans love to see these shows get roasted. So eventually maybe I'll break that promise to myself. But as of right now, I just don't care about Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, anything like that. I don't care. They haven't earned my my care they, they haven't earned it at all and it's just going to get to a point where eventually there everybody's going to realize even the normies are starting to realize that this shit is complete garbage and it's going to stay garbage so long as the message is more important to them than what they're actually making for their quote-unquote fans so anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope you did enjoy and if you did consider leaving me a subscribe i would greatly appreciate it don't forget to like the video comment let me know what you thought and i'll see you guys on the next one hypnotic out